Well, hello there, guys. We got some big news from Dovetail Games regarding Train Sim World 3. As you can see right here, front and center on the screen, a lot of stuff coming out in just a couple of weeks on the 21st of February. They just announced this today, again, if I'm not totally mistaken. And uh, I'm going to try and go over every little bit, uh, watch a couple videos, look at a couple pictures, and go over some things and just see what's what. A lot of this I'm seeing for the first time as well. I've just kind of collaborated it, and uh, we're all just going to take a look at it together. But we're going to get New York to Trenton, uh, Boston Providence, which was already out, of course. They, they say it's getting an update with what, who the hell knows. The Amtrak Acela, which, of course, they did tease a little tiny bit over the holiday season. A Union Pacific Heritage Collection for the SD70 ACE. Uh, Sherman Hill updated, whatever the hell that means. And you can just forget that one. Cajon Pass. All right, let's take a look at, first and foremost, the Acceler. All right, so here we go. We got a little clip for the Amtrak Acela, of course, the sundowning uh, express passenger train that runs the Northeast Corridor, soon to be replaced. Uh, or in the process of being replaced. Uh, and they teased this over the holiday season, and this was recently released as well. I have not seen this video. I've got it loaded up. Uh, let's just take a look at it here. This is the Acela. Of course, it says work in progress. Now, we did have this, uh, pretty much everything we're going to look at today, we did have in Train Sim Classic. And I'm expecting a lot of it to be a near one-to-one -one representation. Matt must have recorded this. I see the uh, pink mouse cursor. The sounds don't sound very good. Uh, from what I recall, they kind of sound just like the Acela and Train Sim Classic, which wasn't very good. This area it's running through seems to be extremely bland. I think this is Boston Providence, or uh, what they call Bro Boston Sprinter. Um... I think they're going to try and change the name of it. I don't know. This this might be. No, this has got to be. Yeah, this has got to be Boston Providence here. This is going uh, north. So there's a lot of stuttering as well. That is not my video, mind you. That is the game or this recording. Uh, they have also noted where these videos, I'll link everything down below where you can go and find and take a look at this for yourself. They've already noted uh, something to the effect of this skipping is not the gameplay. It's due to the recording software or some something or other. The interior of the Acela, obviously. Looks okay. There's almost like zero shading. It looks very flat. The lighting, as usual, doesn't look that great. It is Train Sim World. It looks like the inside of an Acela, for the most part. Be the cafe here. Or dinette. It's very quiet. And see, you can see there that, that weird instant pop of sound from interior to exterior. That's... That's very strange. I was noticing there's almost no sound in that. Now, yes, it said work in progress, blah 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 But that's probably how it will ship. Uh, it was extremely quiet. You can always hear a bit of air or electrics, if you will. All right, so that's that. 
So we'll go ahead and take a look at some of the stills that are on the Steam Store that you can go and look at uh, for yourself. They already have placeholders within the Steam Store. Again, I believe these shots are on Boston Providence. But uh, So what's interesting about this is this is going to be a standalone deal, the Amtrak Acela. I believe it's going to cost $22.99, and it's going to have three scenarios for uh, Boston to Providence. But it's also going to have a timetable, uh, from what I've read thus far, for the New York to Trenton uh, route, which, of course, we're going to take a look at here in just a minute. So let's go ahead and scooch through some of these. Uh, the model itself, as with a lot of Train Sim World stuff, look okay. Uh, that's generally about where it ends, though. Uh, <laughs> of course, when it comes to sounds and physics and you know, general playability and things like that, and what you can do with it, because everything's very locked down in uh, Train Sim World. Editor. <clears throat> uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, this one's obviously winterized. It's got a bit of snow on the bottom, which... You know, it, that's what it looks like. <laughs> Interior shot. Shit, I'm working uh, ACSES, ATC... Uh, we'll see if all that uh, is is supposed to work. There is an update coming to Boston Providence, or what's what's it called, Boston Sprinter, which is supposed to update some of the signaling. So we'll see, uh, you know, because of course they can't release a new locomotive to uh, a route with near broken signaling and things like that. You can see here in this screen that it is going 120 miles an hour. Big wows. another one leaving uh boston snowy again it's, it seems like all these photos are snowy and um very very low lit now one thing i have noticed uh looking at these photos is the headlights i'll give them that the headlights look like they have a nice color to them they don't have that that stupid you know non-color infused uh light color like a lot of the stuff in train sim world has they actually have a, a sort of orange uh, tinge to them. It's another one. Kind of weird lighting. Everything's like purple, purplish. But yeah, the model itself uh, looks okay. That's that's obviously got markers on there. Let's see if we can see. Let's see here. Let me pop out and zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. If there's a uh, passenger information in the uh, the little boxes there, it looks like it's lit. Uh, let's see if there's any other photos here. I might have totally. It's it's kind of hard to see with these angles. It's another interior shot. This one looks a bit better than than the uh, video, the motion capture, walking through. Um, the seat textures look a little weird, uh, but for the most part, it's what the inside of an Acela looks like. Um, that picture looks okay. Then another dimly lit photograph. That's the theme with all these photos is the, uh, the, the low light and snow. So again, uh, as you can see here, the lights, the headlight color actually looks okay. Uh, I'm assuming they're going to ship like this, but that is not your normal uh, North American headlight color for stuff in uh, Train Sim World. I know they did the Union Pacific SD70 ACE. Those those lights had a little actual color to them, um, but those lights actually look semi-normal. Um, Trying to get a better look here. The uh, Panto seems to be... Correct. It's actually touching the wires. As you can see here, uh, there does appear to be, yes, very pixelated, does appear to be uh, some information up there. Can't read anything. Uh, but I have noticed right off the bat, so you see these stopping points for the engineers and the train crew? Uh, so if this is Boston Providence updated, that's not saying a whole lot. So this, this sign right here, the stop sign is clipped through all this crap right here. And then we've got this down here, which is actually in the ramp to go over the tracks. That's another stop point right there. So, uh, yeah, that's dovetail.
All right. Got another shot. Again, the lights look pretty good on that. Model looks nice. 2010 Loco again or set. Uh, I think we saw 2012 earlier on. Although now that I'm looking at it, the, the, sh the shape of it from this angle almost looks a little too blunt. It's odd. Now this thing uh, it was essentially a TGV. I wonder if they even took the TGV model of the power car and kind of tweaked it a bit. It's interesting. Another one kind of far away up top. Again, the lights, you know, look fairly nice. And that's it. That is eight out of eight snowy or dimly lit shots of the Acela. Uh, I will link down below with everything, of course, where you can go and find this and take a look for yourself with a magnifying glass and uh, whatever you'd like to do. But uh, let's move along. All right, so here we have the Union Pacific uh, Heritage Pack, which is going to have six of the Fallen Flag SD70ACE skins. Let's go ahead and take a peep at this. The Western Pacific. Cheap and nothing wasted. None of that is heritage. Man, skipping like a son of a gun. The Katie? Was this recorded on a Nintendo 64? Uh, visuals and skipping are quite skippy. It's Katie again. So Sherman Hill is supposed to receive an update as well, and it would appear that performance-wise, it ain't going to touch that because it seems rather crap still, uh, sadly. There's WP again. Mopac. And SP. They look pretty nice. I mean, uh, visually, again, you know, with Dovetail Games and Train Sim World models, generally look okay. It seems to be it. This is uh, the roundhouse on the route there. Okay. All righty. So we got a couple of still shots. Again, these are direct from the Steam store. Link down below is where you can go and find these and look at them for yourself. So, again, this is going to be the Union Pacific Heritage Pack, which, uh, from what I've read, is going to be a standalone pack. So you won't necessarily need Sherman Hill, uh, from what I gather. So I'm assuming the model itself will come in this pack. And this pack is going to be $14.99. A livery pack for $15 for six skins. $15. Let's let that sink in for a minute. Of course, it's going to be on the SD70 ACE and Fallen Flag, uh, you know, which are the, the heritage skins you have here. 1982 Mopac, 1880, or 1883, 1983 Western Pacific, 1988 MKT, 1989 DNRGW, 1995 Chicago Northwestern, 1996 Southern Pacific. And there's going to be six scenarios for Sherman Hill. So if you don't have Sherman Hill and you get this pack, you, of course, are not going to get uh, these scenarios. So you could uh, you could still throw them on Cajon Pass or whatnot. But, yeah, from what I gather, it's you know it's, it's going to be one of those things where you're actually not going to need uh, the standalone pack. But I will say this, you know, I'm, I'm not super crazy about heritables. Um, you know, there are some nice ones out there. But uh, the Katie, this one here in front of us, is, is definitely one of the most recognizable under the Uncle Pete banner now. And uh, here it, you know, again, it looks, 
it looks pretty good. You can see a bit of weathering and streaking on there. And, uh, you know, as far as the numbers and the logos and things like that, they seem to be uh, all's well. The, the lighting kind of looks like arse. Um, looking at the ditch lights there, they're just bright white. And I was just mentioning how these actually look like they had a bit of color to them when, uh, when Sherman Hill released. All right, so that's the 88 Katie. Uh, this is another very low light uh, Southern Pacific there, which you can't really see. So we'll just go right ahead. Uh, here we have the 89 Rio Grande or Denver in uh, Rio, Rio, Rio Grande Western. Rio Grande Western. That's a mouthful. Uh, again, you know, it looks okay. It looked pretty good. This one looks a little too light. Um it's kind of hard to pinpoint. It just could be the Train Sim World lighting itself. Uh, but if you look at the real thing, which this is a, another one of those striking uh, heritables, um, it, this, the coloring on this one looks a bit off compared to the Katie, for example. So we'll go ahead and go to the next one here. That is kind of a pointless shot. Uh, you can't really see crap. It looks like the cheap and nothing wasted, or Chicago Northwestern is on the lead there. This is a, a heritable foamer dream, uh, if you will, which is uh, leading the SP there, which you can't really see. So the thing about these updates, which I failed to mention with the Boston Providence route, uh, a.k.a. Boston Sprinter, is they're going to be updated with what exactly? I don't know. They haven't really said, but I do know that they're going to be updated with the new lighting system and the skies, uh, which you can see here, of course, and which you could see on the uh, Boston Sprinter route as well. Here they try to recreate Union Pacific's own uh, heritable shot, um, except this is in a totally wrong spot there than where that shot actually took place. I'm sure some of you may know um, what I'm referencing. Uh, but, you know, they did assemble them as they were assembled, so... You got that. You can see a little bit of the colors better here. Uh, the SP one looks okay. Um, Chicago Northwestern one, I'm, I'm not terribly convinced about. The coloring on that one looks, the green looks a little weird. Uh, the Rio Grande as well, that gray is almost like a, it's got like a pink or purple hue or something. Um, it's hard to see the Mopac and the, uh, the Western Pacific. The Western Pacific gray as well looks like it's, it's not gray. It's got this weird kind of blue tinge or something to it. Let's scooch right along here. There's the WP, the uh, Feather River Root, um, which, again, is a very nice heritable. Love the stripes on the short hood. Uh, you know, paint-wise looks okay. Looks like I see a little bit of weathering on there. Let's get out of the clean F11, and uh, we'll zoom in here. Scared. Yeah, you can see a little bit of weathering right here up the steps. WP looks okay. Numbers look all right. The logo and the placement and all that look pretty good. It's it's kind of hard to tell with the, the coloring on this shot. This looks better than that last shot where the, the gray looked kind of weird. And there is some, some weathering along the bottom here with corrosives on metal and things like that. But... Uh, yeah, well, that one looks okay. We'll have to see a, uh, have a better look at it when they release more photos or the actual pack itself. And here's the glorious Mo Pack. This is probably uh, equally one of my favorites. Um, hooked up to the Katie back there. Uh, this thing is just badass. The, the big eagle on the front, the uh, Mo Pack logo, the red sun, the big uh, sideways eagle on the uh, side of the locomotive there. This one looks pretty good. Color-wise, that one looks nice. Uh, that one seems to be uh, pretty legit. Okay, here's a nice um, a nice shot of the CNW here. Let's try and zoom in on this one. Uh, uh, her. Again, this, this Rio Grande unit, um, it's like pink or something. It's very strange. Very strange. Uh, and again... Chicago Northwestern, something about the green is is off, and the and the little bit that like splits the uh, the kind of lightning bolt, if you will, 
It uh, something looks off about it. I'm not sure what it is. It does seem to be uh, a little weathered as well. Um, you know, which again doesn't hurt. It's nice. You know, they they generally try to keep these clean. Sometimes, unless we're talking about Norfolk Southern, and then of course, you know, we know what happens to those. But uh, anyway, I think that is the last shot. All right, moving right along. Righty, righty, right. Okay, so the newest route, the truly newest route and newest thing to come out on the 21st, as again, all of this stuff is supposed to happen on the 21st. It's kind of weird, if I'm honest. It's very weird. Um, but I kind of understand why at the same time with uh, another train simulator uh, getting its footing. Anyway, this is going to be the Northeast Corridor, New York City, to Trenton, New Jersey, and it's actually going to have a little bit of the original Northeast Corridor that came out in Train Sim World 2020 or whatever the hell they called it 100 years ago when the first one came out. Uh, so it's got to have a bit of that as well as Sunnyside Yard, I think. Uh, so let's go ahead and just watch the video. ALP 46 and bi level cars, of course. Yippers. All right, the horn sounds nice. Got that one out of the bag quickly. Tracks here look a little funky. It's like no depth to them or something. It's weird looking. And the X Metroliner cab car, which again is rearing its head, which also was in the first iteration of Trains in World. Uh, it looks like those coaches are clipping into the platform there. Am I seeing that right? Uh, let's go ahead and just scooch that back a little hair right there. Yeah. Those look like they're definitely rubbing the platform. That blue looks terrible. Very weird looking. The the kind of texturing of it, patterning. The blue blue all around just looks very very crazy bright. It's like flat bright. These of course are the uh New Jersey Transit by levels, which uh can be paired up to the ALP forty six, of course. Eh, looks okay. There's like zero shading in here. Again, no no shadows. It's everything just seems very flat. It's got a got like zero depth to it, if you will. Yeah, I'll get the HUD out of the way, man. Well, that was quick. Here's the uh, cab cur, which again we had in the original Train Sim World. Uh, it was a nice model again, but a lot of it was very broken. Be interesting to see what happens with this. And that's it. Very limited. Right, so New York City to Trenton, New Jersey. This is going to be the new route. And it is going to be $39.99 in American monies, which again is way too damn much for whatever reason they are increasing prices without reason or good reason anyway so this is this is going to be 40 bucks it's going to be 58 miles from new york Penn to the trenton transit center uh, it, of course, is going to have the new NJT ALP46 electric locomotive with the multi-levels and cab car on the end of those multi-levels. And then they're going to have the Amtrak ACS64, which we already had, uh, and we already had it in the original game as well, Transom World 2020, which you see here on this uh, shot. And it's going to have the AM fleets, and it is going to have some of the services. It's going to have the X Metroliner cab car on there as well. It's going to have five scenarios, and it's going to have a 24-hour timetable. And as I mentioned earlier on, uh, the Acela should layer into this because uh, it's it's going to be some of the higher speed running uh, on this bit. So again, 
you know, they're, they're, they're playing up this whole lighting thing. We get it. You change the skies. That's great. It's still a train simulator. So let's kind of focus on the train parts, um, not pretty colors. So that's that photo. Not much to glean from there. The ALP-46. This shot actually looks okay. The coloring on this, it's it's a little too uh, low contrasty for my taste on some of the color bits. But this is probably one of the better looking photos that I've seen. And you can tell they upscaled the F out of this too because the uh, overhead line equipment is very sharp. It's not extremely um, jaggy. So we'll try and zoom in here and see what we can see. Again, the uh, the ALP-46 itself looks good. You can see an ACS-64 sitting down, yeah? Double-ended locomotive, of course. So it's got a cab, A and B, or 1 and 2 on either end in the striking uh, New Jersey Transit uh, livery there. The, the perp, pink, and orange, or whatever the hell they call it. I'm sure it's not that. Uh, the bits on the top look pretty good as far as like the uh, the Panto and all that. The horn model looks okay. The horn sounded okay in that little video, of course. Um, steps are painted. It, you know, visually it looks okay. These uh, these buy levels look pretty good here too, as far as you know what I can tell right now. It's got so it's got low platform and high platform uh, as well. It'll be interesting to see if those work. I think they did work on the uh, MBTA stuff on uh, Boston Providence, didn't they? I don't remember. I feel like there was something like that. Um, but, you know, they they seem to be there. We'll see if that actually works or not. Um, yeah, this this photo looks okay. Lighting-wise and, and model-wise, they show a bit of the actual uh, deal. It looks to have a lot of the uh, appropriate stickers where they should be and all that good stuff. Let's go ahead and zoom back out. Go on to the next uh all right so the x metro liner cap car let's try and zoom into this here as well sorry got to get rid of the nice clean f11 so we can zoom a zoom zoom in here so we had this thing in uh the original train sim world and it came with the amtrak switcher the sw1000 which that pack was probably one of the best north american add-ons that they released at the time um, although, you know, with what you could do with them in the game, it was very limited because you had a very limited area to run them. Uh, and there just wasn't a whole lot to do, especially with the switcher in Sunnyside Yard. It was like five mile an hour, you know, moving coaches around. It was, uh, well, it was exactly what it sounds like. We'll probably see that SW. 1000 again at some point as well i would be willing to bet um uh you can see they they're reusing a lot of these assets back here these these damn buildings right here they will never get rid of it looks like the overhead line equipment may have had a a, a, a freshening up compared to the old um i'd like to see old photos i kind of want to reinstall the original trains in world 2020 and take a look at this uh they look freshened up a little bit you can see the blue and yellow handrails here some electrical equipment here on the side. Uh, overall, it looks somewhat plain as far as like the concrete over to the ballast and then the track. There's some kind of weird something going on right there. Um, yeah, it's your uh, Metro Liner cab car. It'll be interesting to see if the strobes work um, and all that jazz. All right, let's go on to the next. All right, now this is a lovely photo. Uh, you know, not for nothing. I'm not going to bitch, just a bitch. This, the lighting in this does look pretty good. It's it's nice composition. Uh, this is definitely on the northeast corridor. Uh, you can see these these high tension, gigantic towers sitting over here, which you know you'll see fairly often down the line here. Let's go ahead and zoom into this as well. Ace, ACS 64 uh, with. I was gonna say, <laughs> I was gonna say cap car. It's they're not they're not cap cars, Sean. Jesus, they're not cap cars. Amp fleets. It's late in the day. What are you gonna do? All right, so let's zoom in and take a look. The bridge here looks nice. Uh, I don't know exactly where this is. I'm sure a lot of the Northeast Corridor foamers are like, oh, that's right at the Shabbatata River crossing. That's fine. I don't know where this is. Uh, looks like a spin bridge there, twist bridge, whatever the hell it's called. Um, 
The red line equipment back there looks pretty good. You can't really see the bits right there and right there. You can a little bit. Um, but this brick down here looks pretty nice. You can see a, a bit of the, the grime from algae and all that down there, kind of green. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if they did anything extra to the ACS. I doubt they did. Um, but, but this photo looks nice. All right. Okay. Here we have the ALP-46 again, and some of the bi-level uh, cars. There is a light smattering of snow on here. You can't really see it. It'll be interesting to see what this looks like with full snow, because I generally think it doesn't look that good, that kind of painted on snow when it's winter. Uh, but let's most indeed zoom in here. I just realized I don't have to come out of F-11 for that. Um Looks all right. The lights don't really have that nice color like the Acela has, uh, so that's interesting. Um, a lot of these are fairly new uh, and have newer types of lighting, but they still fade and the lenses get gross and grimy over the years and after so many runs, and they still kind of emit a color, if you will. Uh, but they look okay for the most part. The livery is as it should. It's got the black trim down the side here. Um, the numbers look like they should, as far as I can tell. It's got red uh, grab irons there. NJ Transit looks good there. Got their little colored logo on the side there. Um, buy levels look pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty nice. All right. Rain, X Metro Liner Cab Car. Again, coloring on that doesn't seem too bad. It's still a bit white. Um, it's very low lights. So it's hard to see much. Uh, the overhead line, I don't know. I don't know if I am convinced now. That looks almost just like the stuff from the original Train Sim World. I'm sure it's been updated somewhere, somehow. Um, it does retain that uh, stainless steel, which, you know, Train Sim World, to be fair, uh, did do fairly well um you know this looks like stainless steel and it's it's gleaming there a little bit which is nice all right let's see what else we got here ah okay this is a nice photograph as well the coloring on this and the lighting is pretty spot on this looks like it was upscaled to like 4k 8k whatever the hell um sunny side yard obviously uh we've got njt consists here now see this is nice this is where I would almost welcome the original SW-1000R back because you've got more to work with. You know, you've got a couple of more train sets instead of the damn ACS and coaches. That's it. So it's just a little bit, little bit extra, a little bit more full. Uh, I'm sure, though, with these trains sitting in the yard here, especially with the overhead line equipment on screen, frames will not be spectacular. Um... But uh, this is a nice looking shot here. Amtrak and NJT together. And I believe, yes, this is the last shot. Again, the lighting is much better here. Uh, a little bit more on point. You can see the X Metroliner cab car a bit better. Um, geez, I really want to compare this to the one from 2020. It, uh, it looks... Fairly similar. The one from Trains in World 2020 didn't look all that bad, to be honest. A lot of weathering going on here. This bolted on door as well. Uh, you can see the rivets all through there, or the bolts, if you will. Um, yeah, looks okay. It's a shame the lights aren't on. You might be able to see the lights a bit better, even though it's bright, so I might kind of wash them out a bit. You can see the ACS 64 sitting back yonder. Uh, okay, so yeah, that's it. Right, so that was most everything I could think of to uh, blab about and look at as far as this ginormous uh, pack. It's not a pack, individual packs, if you will. I'm just noticing on here as well, it says official license of Amtrak, NJT, BNSF, Union Pacific, uh, Xbox, PlayStation 5, 4, Steam, and Epic. So it will, of course, be coming to all of these platforms um okay let's scooch over here so this is uh this is where it gets a little sticky so this is all the new stuff this is very strange i feel like this whole thing was 
completely over-engineered and overdone. They should have just, you know, we could have had one or two of these packs weeks ago, you know. But they're trying to they're trying to do like a big cash grab, garner a bunch of attention, possibly from new players, you know, someone maybe not into the into the you know the scene, whether it be train sims in general or train sim world. Um, but it's it's just it's too much at once. It really is. It's uh, you know maybe half of this at once. You know, like the updates, for example, on Sherman Hill and in Boston Providence, that should have already been released. Like, get that out of here. It's just filler. And then let's talk about the prices. So it's you know it's fairly obvious that it's marketed to existing customers, but the pricing is aimed at new customers to make you think, you know, you're getting like some sort of deal, if you will. But, uh, you know, what's what's a bit ridiculous, though, is like, so here it says Boston Providence, $29.99. That was the original price, right? New York Trenton, $39.99. Why the hell would this be $10 more than this? I mean, Boston Providence was a pretty good route. You know, it was, it was a nice stretch. Scenery was okay. Had some decent timetable in there. The, uh, the equipment was very nice. Uh, both motors, you know, physics-wise were okay. The sounds sounded really nice. Some of the best for North American stuff in uh, Trains in World ever. Um, and it's $10 cheaper. Yes, it's older. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still not on board uh, with this price increase. It's, you know, come on. Come on. Anyway, so the uh, the UP Heritage Collection as well is uh, fourteen ninety nine. It's fifteen bucks for six freaking skins. You can probably get every one of these skins in the little finger paint app within the game for free. Every one of them. Now you're not going to get the scenarios, so you're probably really paying for the. 15 minutes it took to create the scenario, so a dollar a minute sounds about right. Uh, that just seems like a blatant cash grab trying to refresh Sherman Hill, so maybe those new people will be like, oh, I want that, but i I got to have Sherman Hill to, to use those, so i got to buy both. You know, and that right there is 45 bucks. Bam. So Sherman Hill, again, the OG, twenty nine ninety nine supposed to be updated. Calhoun Pass. It's obviously out. It came out as part of Trains in World 3. It's 40 bucks, And the Acela, $22.99. So, again, the pricing. Typically, that would have been, what, $20, bucks, nineteen ninety nine on average. So, the, these price increases are just strange. It doesn't seem like much there because it's only $3 more, whereas over here, this is $10 more than it normally is. So, it's just... <laughs> yes, I like using that. I... Uh... That's what it is. It's a wet fart, basically. It uh, it doesn't make any sense. And what else doesn't make any sense is not only, you know, this here, what we've got, what they're all releasing on the 21st, is they've got these bundles you can get. Let's take a look at that bag of dinguses. All right. Here are your bundles. Choose your bundle. Da, 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 da. This is crazy, man. Look at this. This one over here, the Super Bundle, $95. That's a lot of money. It gets the training center, which is almost completely useless. <laughs> you get New York, Trenton, okay, the new route. Boston, Providence, okay. Amtrak, Acela, okay. UP, Hey, we'll call it UPHB, Union Pacific Heritage Pack. Up, up. Uh, Sherman Hill, Cajon Pass. That's, you know, I guess that's a deal if you don't have any of this stuff. Okay. And then we've got the U.S. Passenger Bundle. $60. Training Center. New York Trenton. Boston Providence. A seller. U.S. Freight Bundle. Training Center. <laughs> Quit acting like this is monetary value. This shit is not monetary value. You know, pardon my anger, but just get that out of there. You're not getting anything extra from that. You're not playing anybody, but maybe someone that's just seen this for the first time. That's it. 
That's kind of what they're angling for. But anyway, it's, you know, it's dovetail. Uh, so with just the freight bundle, which again is $50, you get the UPHP, Sherman Hill, and Cajon Pass. So again, that's kind of a deal. Uh, you know, because the, the two roofs for 50 bucks make them 25 bucks a pop, uh, which even at their old prices of 29, you know, that saves you a few bucks again. But this is this is besides the point. You may be thinking, Sean, what are you what are you flipping your shit about, man? These you know, there's deals here. Yes. If you don't have any of this crap. Sure. All right, so the next one's the New York Starter Pack, which is the Training Center, which is completely pointless. Again, uh, get that out of there. That's you know that's not monetary value worth. Get it out of there. So it's New York Trenton. So it's thirty nine ninety nine. So it's basically that. It's just this route for the standard bullshit price that they now have of thirty nine ninety nine. Then they've got the U.S. Starter Pack, which is thirty nine ninety nine, which is the stupid Training Center and Cajon Pass. Again, <laughs> this is aimed at new players, and it doesn't seem to do uh, anything nice for existing players. So, for me, per se, uh, I've got all of this except for, obviously, the UPHP, the Acceler, and New York Trenton. So, that's uh, 40, uh, 62... And then I'm shit at math. 72, add 5, 75, almost 80 bucks. Almost 80 bucks if I were to buy just the three new things individually. 80 bucks. But I don't even know if there's a way you can do that. I don't even know if there's going to be a, a combo for that um, aside from just buying them individually. It's. This is over engineered. This is ridiculous. <laughs> They should have released this stuff in layers like they always do instead of this all-at-once crap. I don't know what they're going for here. I don't know if they're grasping at straws because of a certain other, you know, train simulation title is just released with something very, very interesting uh, looks to be coming out very soon. But uh, anyway, it's just, you know, dovetail. But that's it, guys. Big news today for Trains in World 3 for Marika. Choose your bundle. <laughs> but that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned. I will most definitely be covering this stuff uh, when it releases. But that's all for now. I bid you good day. Take care out there. <laughs>